Sing and Praise Ministries. Amen. 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 God is awesome in all that he does. Yes. Amen. 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 Magnify the Lord with me. Yes. yes. Amen. Somebody said it. Let us exalt his name, his name together. Are y'all yes. glad about the Lord this morning? Amen. Yes. Amen. I know you're going through something, but we're going to rejoice in the Lord. Yes. I know you got yes. tests and trials, we're going to rejoice in the Lord. Yes. yes. Amen. 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 And we're going to rejoice in spite of what we're going through. Amen. 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 So we welcome you to Kingdom Praise Ministries today. You're not used to seeing my mug up here early, but the pretty one is coming. Amen. 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 We thank the Lord for all of you who will join us in person and by social media this morning. We're so grateful that you stopped by here to be a part of our worship experience. So let's have a word of prayer. Father, we are rejoicing in your name today because your name is above all names. You are glorious and we just want to honor you today. Hallelujah. Yes, we want to honor your presence. We want to honor your, your power. We want to honor your work. Honor your grace and mercy. We honor your healing power. We honor your delivering power. We honor you today, God, for who you are so great and you're greatly to be praised. Your name is above all names. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. We don't mind telling somebody we're grateful this morning. Yes, we're grateful, Lord. God, you gave us another opportunity <clears throat> to give your name praise. So be with us this morning. Manifest yourself. We know you're here, but manifest yourself in our presence, in, in, in this place today, in our presence, God. Make yourself known and clear through the words of prayer, through the scripture, through the preached word, through the singing of the, the singing ministry. God, be, use us today to help lift somebody's heart and spirit. We do pray for our members that are experiencing some smoke in their home right now. Can't even hear us. They not. They can't. They call to say that they are. They can't get in the building to even look at us. For God, we know you're looking at them. Yes. Yes. We know you've got your hand of mercy upon your life. You would yes. make a way, oh God, provide a way. Let them get back into their place safely without harm. And we thank you for your blessing. Those who are involved around the fire that's going on, please be merciful, God. Let, let no, no life be lost as a result of this fire. And we thank you, Father, right now for your blessings and mercy. It commend our way to you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 All right. I'm going to get through these announcements real quick. And we'll be on our way to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. 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 Um, Sunday school this morning with Josiah celebrates Passover. And they were various verses. So I'm going to tell you to read 2 Kings 35. And um, Deaconess Roz gave us that message this morning. And on next week, we're going to have Mary, Moses and Miriam lead in praise. And we're going to have a new, a new addition to our Sunday school ministry. Amen. Uh, what's Amen. Tony's last name? Have, have, uh, Dixon? Dixon. 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 Yeah. Tony, I have Minister Tony. New minister uh, joining us. Uh, joins us every week. He's going to be our teacher next week. So come on and watch us next mm -hmm. Sunday, Sunday school. 845. Join us in our Sunday school by social media. And also we hear... Um, in person, also. All right. Outreach is going to be this Saturday coming. I hope you're available to be with us to help us out. Uh, outreach is September 28th, 7:30 is set up. Eight o'clock a.m. We're going to seek to uh, to serve. It's at Fayette and Front Street. If you if you want to GPS us, it's 120 North Front Street. Is the church that we mm -hmm. actually minister and serve in front of 120 North Front Street. Baltimore, Maryland, 21202. All right. And this morning we have a very special person. I want to get over here to 1 Samuel uh, 1 through 20. 1 Samuel 1, 1 through 20. And I'm going to be New King James Version. 1 Samuel 1, 1 through 20. All right. Ask everyone that will stand and that the can stand this morning as we read these verses before the Lord. Now there was a certain man of Remethen, Zophim, of the mountain of Ephraim, and his wife Alkanah, and his wife's name was Alkanah, and his name was Alkanah, the son of Jeroen. The son of Eli, I'm going to get her for this, uh, Elihu, the son of Tuho, the son of Zuf, an Ephraimite. <laughs> he had two wives, the name of one was Hannah, 
and the name of the other was Penina. Okay. okay. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Also, the two sons of Eli, Hopni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord were there. And whenever the time came, Elkanah, to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But Hannah, but to Hannah, he would give double portions, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her um, rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you, uh, why do you not eat? Why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? So Hannah rose after, after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Uh, now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was bitter, and, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maid your maidservant, and remember me, and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And no razor shall come upon his head. And it, and it happened. As she continued praying before the Lord. That Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke. In verse 13. Now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only. Now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved. But her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her. How long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but I have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief I have spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition which you have asked of him. And she said, let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate, and her face no long her face was no longer sad. Verse 19. That's good. All right. So we got a lot of verses to cover today. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And her sermon topic is going to be. I don't mess it up, but I don't have it here. Well, she'll give her sermon topic when she gets uh, up here. I think it was uh, how to handle your papaya. Panaya. How to handle your panayas. How to handle your panayas. All right, is a sermon topic. And I say her because our first lady is going to bring forth the word. This is our associate uh, minister Sunday. Amen. 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 This Sunday, all the associates of the church. Uh, get an opportunity on a rotational basis to speak. So we thank God for her today. Amen. Amen. And for the word that God has given to her. It's a good word. I pray that you would be attentive and receive the word. And by the way, next week is our Youth Sunday. Minister Vashtar bring for the word for Youth Sunday. Our young, people, our young people will be doing everything next week. So we thank God for each one of them. And we thank God. So without further ado, we're going to have Minister Vashtar to come to, to render out some modern selection. And following that, and following our Samaritan Celestial next speaking voice, if you show here, will be Minister Beverly Jean Eccles. <laughs> the third. Praise the Lord, family. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord, family. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. So I cannot let this month end without um, letting you guys know that this month is National Suicide Prevention Month. Um, it is always the month of September. 
Um, I've been very open with my mental health journey with um, a lot of you. Um, suicide has hit me um, directly in family with friends. So I always want to make sure that if possible, I'm opening up and talking about um, suicide and suicide prevention. Um, there are more than 700,000 deaths globally each year um, by suicide. Um, so this year, uh, the World Suicide Prevention um, has a theme of starting the conversation, changing the narrative. So they want to get rid of the negative um, stigmas that they are, and they want to encourage people to open up and talk about suicide. Um, for me personally, I had a friend that committed suicide and after her death, it encouraged me to open up and talk to my friends about suicide and come to find out that a lot of them were dealing with suicidal thoughts. And even, you know, me and my brother, I had talked about this before. We were both dealing with the same thing in the same house. Um, Christian parents, we didn't ha really have a hard life, but the devil was attacking us mentally and the devil will allow you to think that you're by yourself and you're not. A lot of people suffer from depression. I am one of them. And God has helped me to overcome. Um, for Amen. anyone that needs someone to talk to, remember that you matter. You can call or text the number 988. Mm -hmm. Or you can text TALK to 741741. And that is the suicide prevention line. Um, this song is one of the songs that kind of reminded me that no matter what I go through, no matter how dark it gets, that God is still there for me. And during one of my hardest, darkest nights where I didn't sleep, I cried all day, I cried all night, and I got up and my prayer was simple. Lord, I know you didn't bring me this far to leave me. Amen. And that was the last day that I suffered from my depression. Amen. 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 So this is just, this is a part of my testimony and this is one of the songs that even sometimes you, the devil wants to play with your mind and make you think that God isn't listening to you. But this song reminded me that God is always there. You were not hidden. There's never been a moment that you were forgotten. You were not hopeless. Though you have been broken, your innocence stolen. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will. Send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night is true. I will rescue you. There is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You're not defenseless. I'll be a shelter, I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS, your SOS. I will Send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true. I will rescue you. I will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight. It's true. I will rescue you. 
I hear the whisper underneath your breath. I hear you whisper, you have nothing left. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night is true i will rescue you i will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight is true i will rescue you oh i will rescue you before you long. And I'm going to try to go through what I have to go through quickly. Take your time. But making sure that you understand where I'm coming from. Amen. Amen. So let's start with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father God, we come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we just thank you, Father, for your many blessings, Lord. We thank you, Father, for being our Al Shaddai, Father God. We thank you, Father, for being our Jehovah, Father God. We thank you, Father, for being our Deliverer, Lord. Father God, I can't do anything with your word, Lord, but I ask you, Lord, that you would just decrease me, Father God, magnify yourself, Father God, and give the people what they stand in need of, Lord. Father God, I just present myself to you, Father God, as a vessel. Use me as you want to use me, Father God. And Father God, I pray that under the sound of my voice, Lord, as you speak to the people, Lord, that the word would touch someone's heart, Father God. Give them guidance, Father God, and help them come closer to you, Lord. And Father, I just thank you in advance for all you're going to do, Lord, all that you have done, Father. I ask you, Lord, that you continue to watch over our members, Father God. I pray, Lord, that you touch our ears and our hearts, Father God, so we may hear, receive, and you be, be doers of your word, Lord. And we just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In your reading, um, Pastor read for y'all, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 1 to um, 18. And I'm just going to take a little bit of time to go through it because, you know, in Sunday school, for those who've been paying attention to Sunday school, we've been dealing with some of the things, some of our leaders. And some of the things that the leaders do for us is pray for us. And in turn, we should be praying for them. But on a personal level, you know, I realize that a lot of us go through a lot of challenges in our life. And some of those challenges are difficult. And we also go through some seasons in our lives that's difficult. Mm -hmm. Whether it may be because we're dealing with a job that we don't like, a boss who we think is Satan's daughter, mm -hmm. or... Yes. Our illness that's really, really been hindering us. But these are some challenges that, that we go through. But we also sometimes make plans in our lives that don't go the way that we expect them to go. We take on a new job thinking that we'll be free all to find that it's just more bondage. Or we start talking to somebody as for companionship to find out that we're giving more than what we're receiving. Mm -hmm. These are challenges that we deal with on a daily on a daily basis. And sometimes these challenges depresses us. Mm -hmm. It sometimes it puts us in despair. Sometimes it causes a lot of anxiety and stress in our lives. But when God puts you, allow you to go through these challenges, He also gives you a way to work through those challenges. Do you know that God is this there ready for you? To hear you talk to him. Because you know without God. We can't do anything. But when we go through these challenges. And we present them to God. He'll give us guidance. If we just listen. He'll provide us encouragement. Through his word. 
and he'll strengthen us in our countenance when we present things to him. Now, I'm not saying that every time you pray about something, that God is going to resolve it right on the spot, because sometimes he had to take us through things, and sometimes it's the consequences of something that we've done after he told us not to do. But remember, if you are a child of God, he's going to work everything out for your good, no matter what the situation. So I just want to take a few minutes just to review the scripture before us today. And the title of the sermon is, How Do You Handle Your Paninas? Now, let me start with the first, the first verse. Now, there was a certain man a Ramathirin, Zophim, of the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanai, the son of Joram, the son of Elihu, the son of Toho, the son of Zufo, and Ephanite. And he had two wives. That's the problem right there, right? <laughs> <laughs> the name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Pernina. Panina had children, and Hannah had no children. All right? Do y'all know where we're coming from now? Mm -hmm. The information, that those first two paragraphs just set up the background for what we're going through. Keep in mind, we went through the genealogy of Alkaniah. He let us know his household situation. And we know that he was actually a Levite, one of the um, priests. And the Levites during this time period, because Judah and Israel, they were going through a whole lot of stuff. The judges had disappeared at the time. There was no king. And people were doing whatever they felt like there was good and bad enough to do. The moral climate had declined. But they still was worshiping. The Levites were still present, but they were scattered throughout the country. But on a regular basis, they did go to Shiloh to minister to the tabernacle whenever they were needed. But during this time period, we see that Hannah is discouraged. Hannah is the first wife of Elkin. And Maya, she's in a polygamous marriage because there's two women. And if you recall, when I read scriptures in Genesis, it says that marriage will be between two people. Two people will become one. So when you bring in that third person, you got a little confusion, a little bit of chaos. Yeah. But during this time period, as with everything, permitting assists because it was allowed during this period. It wasn't ordained by God, but he did allow it. So he asked, what happened? What, what happened? Okay. Well, permitting plea in this, in this time period was caused because if you had one wife who was barren and couldn't produce, you were allowed to have another wife because children is what they looked at as being a symbol of status and wealth. Children, unlike today, was a source of labor for the family. Who said labor? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> So in order to continue the, the work of the family and the bloodline of the family, you needed children. Also during this time period, there was various wars going on. So some of your younger guys were sent off for war and they were killed in the battle. So they accepted polygamy so that the women who was behind, A, could get married and they wouldn't be destitute. Because keep in mind, we look, we're talking about the biblical times where women were, women were taken care of by the men. And they looked down on you if you weren't married. Um, they looked down on you if you couldn't have children as well. So that's how Elonia got into the penitentiary situation because Hannah couldn't have any children. And as we know, when you have two women in the household and both of them are white, mm -hmm. somebody, it's, it's going to be messed. Mm -hmm. So Hannah was discouraged because she was barren. And during that time period, barrenness was viewed as a curse or a judgment by God. 
a burn woman or a woman who had a closed womb, they look at that as being a personal tragedy, according to the Old Testament. Then the culture again was the commandment that God gave to man was, y'all remember, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So if you have a woman who cannot have children, she's looked at as a failure. Mm. Our society has changed by going back to what it was back in the biblical days. So her burdenness was an embarrassment to her husband. Although he loved the wife, it was a little, it was a little troubling for him. So as a result, he picked up another wife. Now, as with every family, in order to carry out the, man, the family line, you not only needed children, but you needed what? A male child. Mm -hmm. So these are all pressures that Hannah was feeling. Not only was it a pressure, you know, some women like Sarah, Rebecca, they gave their handmaidens to be fruitful for the husband because they couldn't have children. You know, that causes confusion as well. Because when we look at Sarah Hagar, we still dealing with that situation. Yep. So that's not all obviously that's not always the best choice. But because Hannah could not have children, he took another wife. But this wife who was um who was fruitful took pot shots at the one who could not have children. And what she would do is make comments about Hannah. She would tease her. She would ridicule her. Although we realized that she was really jealous, and that's where most of the resentment came from, because the scripture also tells us that Elaniah loved Hannah. So when you have somebody in the house that's not getting the treatment that they just think they deserve, there's going to be some, some conflict. But most of this conflict came from Penaya towards Hannah instead of vice versa. And the scripture that we have, as we read through, I can't see anything that Hannah did to provoke her. I don't see anything that she did negatively to respond to the negative tension that she gets. But the scripture does tell us that Paniah used every opportunity to deflate her confidence, mm -hmm. to bring her down, mm -hmm. to talk about her. You know how it is. Mm -hmm. Y'all have some, some people when you try to do your best, they talk about you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you give them, their all, give them your all, they still put you down. Nothing's good enough. This is what she's going through. So we know there's no peace in that household. Verse 3 tells us, This man went up from a city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts and shadow. Also the two sons of Eli, Hophe, and Penas, the priests of the Lord, were there. Now the tabernacle during this time period was really just a tent meeting, was located in Shiloh. And this was their religious center of a nation. The Israelite men went there three times a year to attend to the festivals. There was the Passover with the Feast of Unleavened Bread. There was the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of, of Tabernacles. And Elijah made the pilgrimage reveling because he wanted to be there to do whatever he was called to do. Now, we had some priests in the house. I'm not going to talk about them right now because, you know, also during this time period, some of the priests, the Levi priests, weren't doing what they were supposed to do either. They were still in front of people. They were calling, causing chaos. They were sleeping with the women. But believe me, when you're representing God and you do things that's a, disobedient to what he called you to do, there will be consequences. And these gentlemen serve the consequences. But that's for another day. <laughs> But even in their bad habit, you know, God always have a ram in the bush. Mm -hmm. He's going to fulfill that role with someone else. And as we go on, we'll see that as well. So verses 4 and 5, 4 through 6. And whenever the time came for Elaniah to make an offer, 
he gave portions to Pian Pinena, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was clear, so it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she was provoked her. Therefore, she, being Hannah, wept and did not eat. So, do we know that Panina knew exactly what she was doing? Yeah. She knew it. Mm -hmm. And she knew she was making this, this woman's life miserable. <clears throat> of course, that's not God-like behavior, but we run across it every day, don't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what do you do when you in that situation? We'll talk a little bit more. Then El Eli, um, Eli, I can't get my, my pronunciation right. Elkaniah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart grieved? Am I better than ten sons? So he she he sees her countenance. She sees how down and depressed she is. This woman is grieving miserably in her heart because she wants to have a kid for her husband as well. Now, the way he handles it, yeah, he loves her, but when you want something such as a kid or something in your life, no matter how great that husband is, he can't fulfill all the dreams that you have for yourself. So you can't count on your mate to fill all the voids. Sometimes you just need God. Amen. And this is one of those times that she needed God. She didn't need the cruel jokes from Pernina. She didn't need the derogatory comments because that was destroying her confidence. She needed God. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we go through those situations that people criticize us and put us down. But you know, instead of dwelling on the comments that people make about us, we need to present those comments to God. And when we go through presenting those comments and our feelings to God, you know he strengthens us and deepens our bond towards him. So Hannah was in a situation with this woman who ridiculed her. And again, it was because of resentment. She retaliated with her. But Hannah stood strong. She didn't give up her hope. She was weakening, but she knew where to go. And where do you go when you're facing times of trouble? When you're going through situations that you feel burdened, that you feel like you need help? When you, need to, when you need somebody to talk to, where do you go? I hope you go to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's what she did. Because she knew that God could open up whatever burdens that she may have. She knew that God could work anything out for her situation. Hannah goes on, she eats, she goes dwelling to, she drinks, she doesn't drink, she pretty much fasting. But everyone else is eating. But after dinner is over, she goes to the tabernacle and she cries before the Lord. And when she cries before the Lord, she pulls out her heart to God. She tells God exactly how she feels and what she's going through. She tells him about the anguish and the name calling. She tells him how much she wants that child. How much she wants to honor him and honor God. She says, and she makes a vow. O oh, Lord of hosts, when we talk about the Lord of hosts, we're talking about Jehovah. And that's his title when he's actually going to war. This is when people call on him because they really need him. Lord of hosts. <coughs> he can see nothing to stand before him. If you will indeed look on my affliction of your maidservant, Lord, I'm calling you on you because I'm your child. I need you to remember me. Please don't forget me, your maidservants. But will you give your maidservant a male child? She wanted a boy. Then I will give to him the Lord, give him to the Lord all the days of his life. And no razor should come on his head. Lord, just fulfill my dreams, my hopes, and I'll give him back to you. That's a strong sacrifice for someone who's been crying and been determined all they wanted was a kid. But Lord, if we just honor my request I'll win them and I'll give them back to you so when we look at Hannah's prayer 
and she she has a couple in this in this um book. She was careful about what she asked for, and she made a vow. Now, when you're praying to God, I want you to be very cautious about any vows that you make to God. Because you pretty much tell him, Lord, if you do this for me, I'm going to do this for you. God is going to fulfill his side. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you got to make sure you fulfill yours. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because that's an oath. Mm -hmm. And you know, your bond is as good as your word is as good as your bond. Mm -hmm. So when you oath that you're going to do something, you're supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. So I ask you to be very cautious in those situations. Mm -hmm. Lord, if you make a vow to him, ask him to help you keep it. Because in and of ourselves, I know I may have asked for some things and I couldn't keep some of the things. So, you know, Lord, if you help me, I'll do this. And it happened that she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watch her mouth. Now, Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. You know how you have, sometimes you have those prayers where you're just talking to God in your heart, mm -hmm. you know? It's between you and him. That's it. It's not for anybody else's ears. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to share some of the, your most vital and your tender mm -hmm. comments and your thoughts with everybody. Mm -hmm. Because everybody can't handle it. Not at all. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. Mm -hmm. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. Keep in mind what kind of more people we were dealing with during this time period. Almost like at the, this this day and age. Mm -hmm. When people go ready. to the go to the church house and everybody's not crushed. Mm -hmm. Some people just got high, some people just mm -hmm. stumble in because they get drunk. Mm -hmm. God can turn all of that way around. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord. I'm a woman of soulful spirit, which means her spirit is, is at the ground. It hit rock bottom. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have pulled out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maid servant a wicked woman, but out of the abundance of my complaints and grief, I have spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace and the God of Israel Grant your petition, which you have asked of him. She cried unto the Lord, and she told him his misery. I can't stress that enough. She was honest before God. She told him everything that was in his heart, in her heart. And I bring this point up because it's one of the factors that we really need to consider when we talk about prayer. And it's one of the things that I want you to note down. It's four things I want you to note down. First thing is, I want you to be honest before God when you pray to him. And why did I say that? Hannah prayed to God. She gave him everything that was on her mind. She told him exactly what she wanted. She wanted the male child. And what she would do if he promised, if he gave her the male child. She told him about all the problems that she was feeling and about the big one in the household. She told him how she'd been discouraged by Penina, how put down from her. Now, how do you, when, what do you do when you go to prayer? Are you telling God everything, exactly how you feel about things? The second thing she did was she was specific in what she wanted. She didn't say, I want a child. She said, I want a male child. Sometimes when we come to God with prayers, we go, we throw those fast and quick prayers. Lord, bless me. Lord, give me peace. Lord, help me out. But sometimes you have to be specific. Exactly what you want. Lord, Give me peace because I am stressed out with this man on the job. My hair is falling out. Yes, I can't sleep at night. Lord, I need deliverance. Mm -hmm. Lord, the workload is way above my head. I don't have any time to sleep because I'm working 24 7. 
the people in the job are acting crazy. I don't have time with my family. And I can't even comprehend because there's so much stuff going on. Lord, I need a break. Come rescue me. That was a prayer that I had some 14 years ago. Working with my job. Working seven days a week. Leave at 6.30 in the morning. I get home at midnight and start all, all over again. Giving counsel to people that still did what they wanted to do, even after you gave advice. And then you got to go argue the case for them to get them out of trouble. Working with people constantly. And I realized I had gotten to the point where, Lord, something has got to give. Mm -hmm. And when I gave it over to the Lord, it just amazed me how quick it turned around. Amen. 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 It Amen. turned around so fast that I was amazed. Mm -hmm. I decided to put in some applications and I, Lord, I'm just putting this in. Not thinking it's going to go anywhere because a lot of times it, it goes to the black hole. You never hear anything about the job. But the Lord gave me employment quick that was better than what I was at that paid more money than where I was at with less hours. Amen. But it came to it came at a point where I was stressed out to the point and instead of just asking the Lord, give me do this and give me do this, give me do this, Lord, I need some help. Mm -hmm. So I want you to cast your cares unto the Lord and ask him, tell him exactly what you want. If you're going through some loneliness, let him know. Lord, I'm lonely. I don't want to be by myself. I don't know how to act in the place, this place in my life. Give me direction. If it's someone that you're looking for, young people, ask the Lord to send you whom he wants you to have. I remember doing that too. Because I remember before I got married, I prayed for my husband. Yes. And tell it, my baby. list. <laughs> tell it. Tell it. The Lord had to change my prayer. Let me say that. <laughs> Tall, dark, and handsome. And see, he changed my prayer. <laughs> he changed my prayer. Because you, I, I was being specific exactly what I wanted. But as I got into the word and realized, Beverly, sometimes you don't even know what you want. Mm -hmm. So my, my prayer had to change was, Lord, I want someone to love me. And cherish me. Look out for me. Love me like you love the church. Like you love me. And I want somebody that you know who can deal with me. Mm. Lord have mercy. That's a challenge, Lord. Mm. Lord have mercy. Oh, Lord. Lord. <laughs> but, <laughs> Jesus. Cash your cares on the Lord. Yes. He'll give you what you stand in need of. Because I had a whole lot of counterfeits come in. Based on what I thought I wanted. But I realized... That's not what I needed. Mm -hmm. So I had to change my prayer. I want you to go to God being honest with whatever you're going through. Being specific if you know what you want. But most of us don't know what we want. So we have to ask God to give us what we need. He'll want sometimes to destroy you. Mm -hmm. But when he give you what you need, He'll make it all right. Yes, he will. Yeah. And then, when Hannah was praying, praying, she also received encouragement. She received encouragement from Eli. Because he told her, go on. The Lord of Israel will give you what you stand in need of. But you know what? When you cast all your cares on God, when you get up from that prayer, a lot of times you feel relief. And sometimes he'll give you right away directions on what to do. And then, don't second guess yourself. Take the counsel that he gave you. So if he says something, if he gives something your way, and he said, Angie, this is for you, don't second guess it because someone said, I don't know whether you should do that or not. You know what you ask God for. Mm -hmm. Leave out with that confidence, knowing that God will provide. And then, lastly, trust God. When you pray to him, you know, cast your burdens onto him, trust that he's going to work it out. Don't go up picking up that same issue 
trying to work it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't go back to that same individual trying to make things men. Because you know what? People tell you who they are. Yeah. And when they tell you who they are, pay attention. Yeah. And don't go back down a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. When he take you out of a situation, don't go back into that situation. Right. Now, in my, in my case, with the job that I left, they held the job open for me for a while, thinking that I would come back. Hmm. <laughs> and it's easy because you're used to the mess. Yeah. Even though it's crazy. You used to Even though it's crazy, you know that craziness. Mm -hmm. But when the Lord opened the door for you, go in that door. Go in that door. Don't yeah. look back. That's right. <laughs> Don't look back. Run. <laughs> so she was honest with God. She was specific what she wanted. She took the encouragement that she received from her prayers. And she trusted God to resolve her problem. Verse 19 tells us, Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to the house at Ramah. And El Elkaniah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of the time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because of I asked of the Lord, for him. God delivered on his promises. And if you would just cast all your cares on God, he will deliver his promise. Just like he was faithful for Hannah, he's faithful to us as well. So I just want you to take some time just to dedicate yourself to God. Present all your problems to God. Because those problems are nothing but paneras, paninas. Someone who's always trying to pull you down or a situation trying to pull you down. But cast all your cares to God. I can't stress that enough. Because we're going to be going through some trying times. Mm -hmm. And we need to be praying. Yes. And we need to be trusting God. And we need to be asking God exactly what we need. And trust God to deliver. And why do I bring up prayer? Because prayer is a powerful tool yes, it is. Yes, it is. that God gives us. Mm -hmm. It allows us to connect with God and allows him to strengthen our spiritual maturity. It allows us to overcome our enemies, our foes, our paninas. If we just cast it on to him. Prayer works, guys. Yes, yes it, it does. does. It does. Prayer works. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Prayer works. Yes, it yes. Does. So, I want you to earnestly pray yes. to God for the things that you want and for those situations in your lives, for all those paninas that you're dealing with. Present it to God. Recap. Be honest. Tell him exactly how you feel. He knows anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so don't hold back. Nope. If I don't like Joe, I may not want to say Joe, but you may as well tell him that you don't like Joe because guess what? He knows. Only God can give you the love for Joe and he already knows what's in your heart. Yeah. Be specific. Lord, I want a mate. I want someone to feel this loneliness. Give me you. But if you desire for me to have another significant other, Send me the person that you know that I need. Someone that's equally yoked. Yes. Yes. With you. Be encouraged. Because when you get off your knees or sit back up or because some of us can't get down on our knees. Amen. 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 <laughs> well, you should feel that lightness that you have presented all to God. And if you still feel some heaviness, you Pray may want to spend some more time. Some yes. Because there's still something there that you have not given up. Amen. Because sometimes things are deeply rooted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't know what to pray. Sometimes you just moan and groan because your Holy Spirit knows what you stand in need of. Sometimes, like I said, sometimes things are deep rooted. But after you pray, after you present it to the God, after, to God, Trust that God is going to work it out. Mm -hmm. Don't go back and pick up that situation and try to handle it yourself. If he give you direction, follow direction. 
But don't take that burden on again. If he take you out of a relationship, stay out of the relationship. Yeah. If he resolve that debt, stay out of debt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the right there. That's the position. <laughs> so trust God for all that you're going through. Now, my last point I want to make last week when I taught Sunday school, we talked about how to pray. Today we talk about the supplication, what you do when you're presenting everything to God. But I also want you to go back and remember how to pray. We talk about acknowledging. Acknowledge who God is. Tell God who he is. We know he is all in all. He's our Elohim. He's our Lord. He's our creator. Tell him who he is. Confess your sins. The ones that you know about and the ones that you don't want to talk about. Thanksgiving. Giving him honor and thanks for all that he has done and for doing whatever you you want to ask him to do. And that supplication is when you present to God what you need. And it shouldn't always be about me, me, me. Pray for each other. Mm-hmm. You know that whoever's going through whatever, pray for them. We should all be lifting each other up encouraging one another being there for one another so trust God and I can't stress enough use what works pray amen 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 Amen. Amen. I got my notes down. Be honest. How to deal with you, Panina? We changed the name like pronounce my name like ten times. Panina. Panina. How to deal with you, Paninas? Um, be honest. Papaya. Be specific. <laughs> be encouraged. Trust God, and then she told us how to pray. All right. Amen. 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 I was thinking as she was uh, preaching this morning about in my time of. Um, Meditating, talking to God, I came up from uh, Psalm 20, uh, 34, verse 20. It says, he keeps all his bones. None of them shall be broken. Amen. Amen. And I was led to pray that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But the doctor said, but the, the, the doctor said my knee was cracked. A cracked knee takes three months to a year, um, three months to six months to get well if you don't need surgery. So I'm praying, I'm saying, well, I'm thinking to myself, well, I can't pray that prayer. The doctor told me the thing. I kept praying. He keeps all his bones. Mm-hmm. None of them should be broken. Took Roger's right home. And to go to the orthopedic doctor, he says, take that brace off. You don't need all that stuff. He said, throw it in the tray. Amen. He said, if you don't have a crack, you had a chip. And what you're feeling pain-wise is more of your arthritis than it is the bone. Y'all, y'all, I don't even know what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I tell my wife, get that brace. She didn't throw it away. I saw it in the back seat of the car. <laughs> I slept, ate, did everything but shower with that brace for two weeks. But thanks be to God. I'm, I'm a little sore, but I'm still standing. Amen. 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 So thanks be to God. So prayer works. Y'all know prayer works. Prayer really, what it she does. said this morning, prayer really works. Yes, it does. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you know, you receive your answer. Not when you see it, but you see the answer when you pray. Yeah. Amen. See what happened to Hannah when she prayed? And Eli came along and encouraged her in that prayer. She got an up and eight. Uh-huh. So she didn't receive the answer when she got pregnant. She, come on, y'all. Right she right. received the answer. Right y'all better receive right an answer while you're praying. Okay. If that was said, what'd she say? Okay. If, you, if you, you go down heavy and you stand heavy, you ain't prayed long enough. Mm-hmm. Pray until you get a come on now, y'all. Yes. Pray yes. until you get an answer. When yes. that burden leaves, you know that you and God have met together and the problem is solved. Yes. He may not change the circumstance, but he'll change you. Yes. Come on, y'all. You yes. got some things. Get up and you wonder why my feet so light? Mm-hmm. I got the same problems. Why my heart so lifted? I got the same situation. Because you met, come on, somebody met, yes. you met with God. Yes. Yes. You didn't meet with no chump. 
Nobody without power. That's why I met with God. I met with God. God. Come on now. I met, I met with somebody who can fix it. Yes. Not just yes. talk about it, but fix it. Amen. Yes. How many know he's a heart fixer? Yes, yes he is. is. Yes, he is. I want to encourage you to go back and read that story. I know it's a lot of hard names in there. But read through, do the best you can with them. And get to those, but get the story. That's get right. the message that prayer works. That's right. She brought it out so beautifully. Did she, y'all? Look at God. Amen. Pray for the message. Amen. 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 She brought it out in a wonderful way. She, you know, we gotta just pray for each other, y'all. We all are learning, we're all are growing. And let me tell you something. Talk to yourself this morning. Talk to yourself. And say, be patient. Be patient. With yourself. With yourself. <laughs> You're yes. still growing. Still growing. Amen. Amen. Be patient with you. Amen. So we thank God for all his blessings and mercy. We thank God for each one of you. Today, I'm going to just close out in prayer um, that whatever you stand in need of today, we're going to talk to God about it. Amen. 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 She talked about having those mates and meeting people. I like what she said. She said, tell God, stop looking, y'all. Stop. Tell your neighbor, stop hunting. Stop, stop hunting. hunting. <laughs> Say, God, send me the person that you want me to have. Send yes, me the Lord. person. Send me. And until then, the Lord is my shepherd. Amen. Yes. I shall not want. Yes. Amen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You complete us. Hallelujah. We don't need a person, a job, a position, a money, retirement, friends, a popularity. You complete us. Yes. 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 yes, Lord. All other things are just side bars and mm. side shows. We can make it without the sideshow, yeah. but we can't make it without you. Amen. Amen. So, Lord, help us to center our lives around you. Help us to remain focused on you. Yeah. And help us, God, in our prayer that we pray until we get an answer. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let your spirit combine with our hearts and our spirits. And let us pray until we hear you say, child. It's going to be all right. It's going yes, to be all right. Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's pray until we sense your peace overcoming our lives. Let somebody understand my voice who's troubled by situations and circumstances. Father, today I pray that they receive the peace. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. The peace that passes all understanding. Receive that peace that bypasses all understanding. Yes, Lord. Know that you don't have to struggle. Let them know they don't have to struggle. All they need to do is trust. Hallelujah. Help us to know you told us this morning to trust you. Yes. So we put our circumstances, the lack, the need, the want, the desire, all these things in our lives. And thank you for being so patient with us, Lord. Because sometimes you have us pray and pray all to change our prayer. Yes. yes. To let us know that after all, it's not what we want. It's what you want for us. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. And what you want for us is the best thing for us. All other things are substitutes and counterfeits. Yes. Yes. Father, deliver us from the counterfeits that come our way. That deliver us right. from those things we think that are answers, but they're really problems. Yes. They're really questions, not answers. Deliver us from those things. Help us to walk in your way and your word. Heal God today. Understand my voice. Heal, touch, and deliver, oh God. Minds, change minds, oh God. Turn hearts. Save somebody this day. Deliver someone. From the bounds of sin. Deliver us, oh God. Yes, in our emotions and our mindsets and our feelings. Deliver us, God. From our hang-ups and hang ups Deliver us, God, from habits. Deliver us, God. From bad thinking. Deliver us, God, we pray. Let your spirit not only wash us, but let your spirit fill us. Yes, Lord. Fill us, God. Fill us afresh by your spirit. And we be careful to give your name all the praise and glory. To you be the praise. To you be the glory. To you be the honor. We're not made for ourselves. We're made for you. Yes. And we want to glorify you. Yes, and man's heart won't rest until it rests in you, God. Let people know that today. There'll be no rest until we rest in you. Yes. And surrender our lives to you. And we thank you for these things. Ask the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please be, come be a part of us uh, Saturday morning. As many as can come, please come be a part of our outreach ministry. We need all the hands we can get to be effective and to be uh, 
uh, be able to hand your things out properly if we have more hands. Mm -hmm. So please come out be with us if you can. And if you cannot be there, it doesn't matter if you can or can't be there. We all we need prayer either way. Pray for us so we might be effective in ministry and use the thing God puts in our hands for the uplifting of his kingdom and his people. If somebody may come to know Christ, pray for our um, uh, elections that are coming up. Pray for this country to find peace and to get the most sane person in office. Amen. Can I get a witness? Yes. Yes. Pray that uh, that the same will outweigh the crazy. Yes. And the election might come out in a way that we might have the best person for the job. We're not praying for a savior. We all got a savior. Amen. Amen. We're praying for a good leader. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Some people look to that president as a savior. He not nobody's a savior. Mm -mm. We got a savior. We need one of them. Mm -hmm. But we need good leadership. So Amen. pray, 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 pray. Amen. 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 So God bless you, my family. Those who are with us and those that are watching us by way of social media. We pray that God's richest blessings be upon you. We pray his grace be upon you. His mercy be upon you. And that the communion of the Spirit will rest, rule, and abide in your hearts. Kingdom Praise Ministry signing out. God bless you. God bless. Amen.